Amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Good to see all joyful faces. I trust that uh, our beloved missionary has um, just opened up so much because uh, we've had an awesome week where the Lord really is speaking to our hearts, speaking to his people. The Ruach HaKodesh, we know, has been promised in the latter days. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon my men servants, maid servants, and I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. What a blessing. Amen. We have the spirit of prophecy in us. We know that from the book of Revelation, the, the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. What greater joy that we can receive but to know by the Holy Spirit the things that are coming to pass. The Lord does not leave us without guidance and direction. We know the Lord can do great and mighty things. And we're excited to be called his people. We're excited because we know that the promises that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the promises that were made to the children of Israel through Moshe, the promises that were made through David to the present day, God keeps covenant. God keeps covenant for a thousand generations to those who love him and keep his commandments. We cannot emphasize more that we are living in perilous times and that we need the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit, how we are to move through these perilous times. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to instruct us, to teach us, to guide us, to intercede for us, <laughs> to work great and mighty exploits, advancing the kingdom of God advancing the children of Israel, moving toward the promise and the fulfillment of what Hashem has said in the latter days. He would gather us out of all the nations. He promised to pour out his spirit upon us. He promised to write his Torah in our hearts and in our minds to put his laws. So we have in him the fulfillment of all things. He being Yeshua himself, who is for us wisdom from God. So we have all the wisdom and knowledge hidden in Yeshua, Yeshua hid in us. So we're without excuse. It's knowing how to hear what the Spirit is saying. There are so many different voices. There are so many different opinions in the world, but yet we can rest assured that by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we are moving in the direction that God would have us to be. So this morning, we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to be looking at this phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal experience that Ezekiel had in the Valley of the Dry Bones. Now, I'm sure that you've heard many messages in the past regarding this. This really is a picture and a foreshadowing of the renewal of the regeneration of the rebirth of Israel. And so we know that in 1948, there was the land of Israel was reunited. The nation was born in the day, May 14th, 1948. That is a day that marked in history a fulfillment of what had been prophesied. But we know that Israel needs the Ruach. Israel needs the Spirit. And so we're going to learn this morning two things. In this process of renewal, in this process of regeneration, the rebirth of the nation and the rebirth of the children of Israel really is the working of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. And so, with that having been said, we're going to begin at verse 1, chapter 37, which reads, The hand of Adonai came upon me, 
the hand of Adonai came upon me and brought me out in the Ruach, in the Ruach of Adonai, in the spirit, and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. What a sight. Valley of dry bones. I had an earlier discussion with Rochelle during the week regarding how un-Jewish this would be. When there is a death in Jewish culture, there is a burial. So how could it be that we had all these dry bones that obviously were not buried? There were no graves there, and yet they're lying in the desert heat, dried up. So it really signifies there had been some disaster. This could have been a battlefield. This could have been many things. But we look at it from the contents that for whatever reason, there were thousands upon thousands and thousands of dead bodies that had not been buried. So it looks like it's the aftermath of a, of a, a war scene. But there was no time to bury the dead. So, with that in mind, we look at the scene and all around. The scripture says, very many in the open valley, all around. And the spirit had caused Ezekiel to, to pass and to look and to observe and to see all these dry bones in the valley. And verse 3 says, he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Imagine. Adonai comes to us and asks the same question. Can these bones live? Now we can look at ourselves. I know, speaking for myself, and Rochelle can testify, and many others, the older we get, these bones are, are getting it gets harder and harder to move. <laughs> Your mute is not on, so they can hear you. I can hear. I can hear. Though, but that's okay. I, I was talking about my dry bones. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> and my mom said, "Amen." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Who better to testify that 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 her son is not the, not the uh, the person he used to be. I don't I don't move like I used to move. <laughs> I am looking at who am I sitting there in that chair? It's hard to say each screen's different. We don't know. Well, I, I think I, I, I'm looking at a blessed sister I hadn't seen in so long. Oh, can you see her? Oh, I could see her. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God. 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 Here we're talking about bones and not being able to move, and I see a miracle. <laughs> it is good to see you, sister. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, shalom. What a blessing. What <laughs> <laughs> it is a blessing. It is a blessing to see that you can move about. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's, and, and, and we're we're so excited of what God has done. Amen. 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 Well, as you know, the older we get, these old bones are like dry bones, and we just can't move like we used to. So the question is, can these bones live? Yes. Yeah. With God, all things are possible. And so the prophet here is really being asked a question that can only be answered in the affirmative. And so we see here in Ezekiel an affirmation of faith. I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. <laughs> There's no doubt. We know. You know. God knows that these bones can live. God can do anything. God who brought all into existence by the very word, the very breath that comes out 
of the Lord our God. God marks miracles. Our very existence, our very lives, our very rebirth is the miracle, wonder working of God. So no doubt, the only answer to the question, can these bones live, is you know, without a doubt, they can live. Again, he said to me, prophesy. Remember, we talked about the spirit of prophecy. We talked about what, what Hashem had promised he would pour out upon all flesh. Do you know that the, that the sons and the daughters of Israel have been promised such a great blessing of the spirit of the Ruach? And you see, the question is, what can we do with the spirit who lives in us? What is possible? With the Ruach, there is nothing impossible. In our humanity, as we get older and whatever, we're subject to all of these calamities. Whatever, whatever happened in this valley of the dry bones must have been, it could have been war, it could have been a, a, a plague, it could have been a pandemic. We don't know. What we do know is that there was no time or maybe there just was no one left to bury the dead. And so this is an example, a snapshot of what is possible with God and what is possible when the, when the Ruach, when, when the Holy Spirit comes upon these dry bones. You see, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Now notice in this first prophecy, Ezekiel is prophesying by the Spirit of God, and what he is saying is the Word of God. How many of us know that when the Spirit is speaking, it is the Word of God? Amen. What are we to hear? What is the Spirit saying to the churches? Seven mm -hmm. times in the apocalyptic churches, we hear the constant reminder, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. There are many voices that have gone forth into the world. There are many spirits that have gone into the world. There are false prophets. There are false teachers. How are we going to be able to discern? How are we going to be able to distinguish between that which is true, that which is truly the word of the Lord, and that which is not? by the very same Spirit that we have been given in Yeshua. You see, by the Holy Spirit, the impossible becomes possible. By the Holy Spirit, our dead bodies will be raised up. By the Holy Spirit, we are being renewed, regenerated. It is only by the Spirit that we are born again. You remember the story in John chapter 3 when Nicodemus came by night to Yeshua and Yeshua began to, to teach him about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. No one can enter except the man be born again. And he was perplexed. He didn't understand. Now understand who Nicodemus was. He wasn't just anybody. He was a Jewish sage. He was a Jewish a teacher of the Jewish people. So how is it that one who studies the Torah and the prophets and has all of the wisdom of Torah and has devoted his life to the study of it doesn't know what this rebirth is signifying here? I'm sure Nicodemus has read the prophet Ezekiel, what is recorded right here in the very words that we're reading. So 
how unusual it is for one so scholarly among the, the people of Israel to not know what this rebirth is all about. You see, what we're reading here is, is really, we're getting a picture of renewal. We're getting a picture of what God's Spirit will do in renewing us, regenerating us, and, and this new birth is the working of the Ruach HaKodesh. How excited are we to know that the very Spirit of God that dwells in us is the very the assurance that what we have been promised, our God will fulfill. This regeneration, this rebirth, will have its fulfillment in the final redemption of the very people to whom God said, I will pour out my spirit upon you, upon my men servants and my maid servants. See? And they will live. You see? They will live. Even though they're dead, even though their bones are dried up spiritually, this is our condition before we come to the truth. Before we come to the filling of the Holy Spirit, we like these dry bones. Notice what is being prophesied here. First and foremost, what the Lord God says is, surely I will cause breath, ruach, to enter into you. Now you would think that that would be the very first thing that would happen. I will put sinews on you, bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put ruach in you, and you shall live. Well, verse 7 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. You see, the word of the Lord comes by the Spirit of God, and we can only speak truth when we're speaking the words that we have received. We don't add, we don't take away. And see, this is the obedience of the prophet. This is the obedience of those who have the Spirit of God in them. And when we speak and prophesy by the Spirit of God, we are speaking the truth. It is the word of the Lord, of Adonai. You can rest assured that what is being spoken is certainly going to come to pass. No matter how impossible the situation is, we are encouraged in the scriptures to pursue this gifting to prophesy. Don't be afraid. As the Spirit moves you, so speak. And the words that you receive from the Spirit of the Lord, don't be afraid to utter them just as the Lord is speaking through you. Why? Because we anticipate as we're moving by the Spirit of God among the children of Israel scattered throughout the nations, the Lord is going to fulfill what he promised he would do in the end of days. Notice what's happening when Ezekiel obediently says and does what Adonai has commanded him. So I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. Listen, Emmanuel Israel. Our gifting is to prophesy. Our mission is to go and bring the gospel of the kingdom of God to the very people to whom Yeshua came to be both their redeemer and savior. There is no redemption apart from Israel and the fulfillment of the covenants that Hashem made with his people Israel. Remember that because we're living in very complex times. We've got churches that have aligned themselves against Israel that want to eradicate Israel even from the Holy Scriptures, rewrite the Scriptures so that it removes Israel from being the very people in the very land that had been promised. 
We know that there is the spirit of lawlessness, and we know that the spirit of Antichrist has been working since the very beginning and to this very day. And we know that there are many lying spirits that have gone into the world that are bringing the nations to war against Israel. We don't have to go very far to learn about that. Read the book of Revelation. Understand that we are living in such a time as this. And for such a time of this, we know that God is raising up his armies. This is what we're going to see unfold here, is, is again, the armies, an exceedingly great army on earth is being raised up from these dry bones. We're in this process as the children of Israel, that we are being regenerated, that we are being renewed, we are being restored, and, and this process of regeneration, this new birth that we have, is a spiritual birth. So we know that first and foremost in the prophecy was that the prophesied that the breath would enter into them. And you would think that would be the very first thing that would happen. But what happened was, is there was a noise, and then there was a rattling. The bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no ruach, there was no breath in them. So you see, it's one thing to do what Adonai commands us to do. When the Lord gives you a command, obey it. When you receive a word by the Spirit of the Lord, open your mouth and speak what thus saith the Lord. That's what it is to prophesy. To prophesy is part of the process of building up the house of God, to edify, to encourage, to exhort. You see, what we're doing is speaking life into the very bodies and the bones of the people that although they're walking, but they're the walking dead dead in trespasses, dead in their sins. But yet what you have in you, what we have is the spirit of prophecy. That had been prophesied would be the children of Israel in the last days. On my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. We would have to call God a liar if we deny that prophesying is part of the ministry to which we have been called. And so like Ezekiel, we too, by the Spirit of God, are speaking life into the very people all around us. Look around. Look around the, the Inland Valley. It is a valley of dry bones. Yeah, but everybody's living and walking. No, they are not living and walking according to the ways of the Lord. We are living in evil times. And we see lawlessness all around us. But is there hope that they can live? Yes. And how? By the Spirit of God. You see? I will cause breath to enter into you. Well, before that breath can enter into you, they have to come together. Because these bones were dry and scattered. Humanity is dried up, spiritually dried up and scattered, like sheep without a shepherd. And so, here, they begin to come back together. And how is that happening? What is Ezekiel doing? Is he physically taking these bones and, and, and reassembling them so that what he has is a bunch of skeletons? I mean, I remember in school, there was a skeleton in our class. And you could see the bones and how they were connected, but there was no, no covering. There was no flesh. It was just a skeleton. Okay. 
Well, what Ezekiel was witnessing was, as he was prophesying, something began to happen. You see, the moment we open our mouth by the Spirit of God, anticipate that you're going to see something happen. You see? Why? Because God's word in you will not return to him void. The very word that we prophesy by the Spirit of the Lord is the very thing that you can anticipate is going to happen. And so you see, we see Ezekiel prophesying as he was commanded, and we see the results. What began to happen is these bones began to come together. And not only were they beginning to come together, but now flesh was being added to them. All that makes up a human body began to come together. You see, that's the miracle of the power of God. Any wonder that the prophet would, would say, oh, Lord God, you know. <laughs> you know what you're about to do. But do you notice that it was accomplished? What Adonai, accomplished did not get done without the agency of the one through whom he was speaking remember upon my men servants upon my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and they they the plural so you see not only do we look for the ezekiels not only do we look for the jeremiah's not only are we looking for those prophets of old, but we are looking for those men and women who are filled with the Ruach, who are filled with the Holy Spirit today. Amen. Today, not, not two, three thousand years ago, but today. We, by the Spirit, will see great things being accomplished by Adonai. Elohim in these last days because God is fulfilling his covenant. His covenant. Time and time again, I've heard people make the same excuse. Well, well, pastor, how are we going to, to reach the Jewish people with the gospel of Jesus Christ? How are we going to get them saved? And my response is simply this. Not you, but the spirit of God in you is the one that's going to do the work. Not you, not me. There is no way in our humanity that we could do what we are witnessing through these words of the prophet. This is what you can anticipate is going to happen in your midst. That Jewish man, that Jewish woman, that Jewish teenager, that Jewish child that lives next to you or standing near you in the, in the marketplace, wherever it is, your cry to God daily is, Lord, fulfill your covenant that you swore to the children of Israel. The church has been in this world for 2,000 years. We are without excuse. If every last Jewish soul on the planet right now doesn't begin this process of renewal, regeneration, and ultimately experience the rebirth that we know only the Spirit of God can accomplish in them. It's not going to be our programs, our devices, our techniques. No. Only the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel did not do anything other than speak the words that he was commanded to say by the Spirit of the Lord. When we speak by the Spirit of the Lord, that is the word of Adonai. And get out of the way, because what's going to happen is we're going to see the miracle. And so now, there are they're all come together, but there's only one problem. No breath. No breath. Now follow the order here. First, what, what Adonai is doing in our midst is bringing us together. Okay? So let's not be in a rush to try to force Yeshua on the Jewish people. We're not about going and breaking down doors and, and, and trying to shove Jesus down their throats because we got to get them saved because if we don't get them saved, they're going to perish. No, that's not for you. 
to worry about. Notice the scene here. These dry bones, we don't know how long they've been dead. They were dried in the scourging desert heat, and I can tell you they were dry. There was nothing but dry bones. And yet, God could take those dry bones and bring them back to life. His power to renew, to regenerate, and to bring them to rebirth. That's not us who does that. We have to learn to rely on the Spirit. Because it's through the Spirit that Adonai Elohim is going to accomplish all that he promised to his people. And as impossible as it may appear to be, there's just no way this can be accomplished in our day. You don't know my God. And you obviously don't know your God if you question him. Oh, Lord God, you know that all of Israel will be saved. You know that all of Israel is going to live and not die. And it's not going to be because we're so brilliant scientifically. We come up with programs on how to get the Jews saved. No. All we did, like Ezekiel, was to open our mouths and prophesy as the Spirit commanded us. God does all the rest. How these dry bones came together, how the seniors began to, to how this began to, to be, Ezekiel is witnessing a miracle right before his eyes. And so, again, he prophesied. See, also, verse 9, he said to me, prophesy, prophesy to the breath, to the Ruach. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the Ruach, thus says Adonai Elohim, thus says Adonai Elohim, come from the four winds, O Ruach, come from the four winds, O Ruach, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. That they may live. Right. Having received the command, having been given the words, the prophet opens his mouth and says, I prophesied as he commanded me. And the Ruach the Spirit of God came into them. Notice, into them. And they lived, stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Have faith that in the coming days, you're going to see an exceedingly great army of Israelites that have been renewed, regenerated, reborn again lining up the ranks of the armies of the living God as we move toward the land and the future that God has promised to his people Israel. God can do it. God can do it. God will do it. And that we can rest assured. Verse 11 tells us, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. See, when God does something, he doesn't do it halfway. When Paul declared all of Israel will be saved, know this, it will be done. And it's not for us to try to determine the time when God will do it. We don't put a timeline in God's plan. That's not for us to know. It's not for us to try to dictate when God can move on the children of Israel, when he cannot. Back away. We got to get out of God's way and allow the Spirit to do what He's going to do. And what that's going to take is obedient men and women of God who have the Spirit of God in them who will prophesy as the Lord commands them to. And they're not afraid nor ashamed to speak the words that have been given to them out of fear that the people may not receive them. 
See, oftentimes we don't say what the Spirit is moving us to say out of fear. That it's not going to be received by the populace. That the community at large is going to scoff at it. They're going to make fun of us. They're going to, to uh, say, well, you don't have the credentials to speak and say those things. But who ever put a, a, a restraining order on the Holy Spirit? God will do what God is going to do because he is God. He is Adonai Elohim. He is the Almighty God. Nothing is impossible for him. So let us come together in that boldness of faith that Ezekiel demonstrated when he said, Oh, Lord God, you know. You know what you're going to do. You know that they are going to live because you are God. You are the creator. You have the very life. Our breath, our entire being is in you. That is the almighty God we serve. And so, he goes on, he says this. They indeed, they say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. The United Nations will not stand in the way. The World Council of Churches will not stand in the way. The powers of the beast will not stand in the way from the children of Israel coming into the land of Israel. That you can rest assured. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up from your graves, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says Adonai. Rest assured, it's not you, it's not me, it's not any organization, it's not any human power. No human being, no angel in the heavens above, on the earth, the earth below the earth, can prevent God from doing what he said he's going to do. For us is to join the ranks of this great, exceedingly powerful army filled with the Holy Spirit. It's going to march right into the very cities and towns of Israel until all of Israel comes to the salvation that has been promised. And the final redemption when we see the coming of the Moshiach, Yeshua, a Moshiach, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I hope this message will encourage you. Let's get let's get moving as the Spirit moves. Amen. I'm going to turn this back to Rochelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shalom, shalom. God oh. bless you, my mother. What a blessing. <laughs> Everybody needs their mom in their back pocket. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, what a blessing. Your word is alive and powerful, sharper than the two-edged sword, because it's the word of the Spirit. It's the word of the Amen. Lord. We are blessed to have you bring it to us today. And as you were sharing, the Lord led me to two different places in Scripture. I just want to share two verses with you quickly. The first comes out of Bereshit, out of Genesis. Hallelujah. Chapter 41, and it is verse um, 38. Background to it very shortly. This is when Yosef was being raised up to the throne. It's after he's been in prison, he has shown the wisdom of the Lord that was in him. He prophesied of the dreams. And Pharaoh, unsaved, unbelieving Pharaoh, one who does not know the one true and living God, yet obviously... God's spirit was moving. He said to his servants, can we find such a one as this is 
a man in whom the spirit of God is. Hallelujah. In Yosef, the spirit of God, and how encouraged I am. And I pray it encourages you that we can take Paul's own words, that he spoke to one of the first churches, and really it was a Messianic congregation. It was Jews and Gentiles that come together in that first century to form the nucleus of a called out assembly to be taking the gospel to the world as Pastor Gill has encouraged us to do today. In Ephesians 3.16, Paul speaking said, I pray that from the treasures of his glory, he will empower you with inner strength by his spirit, by his Ruch HaKodesh. Ruch HaKodesh. It is just so overwhelming that my words fall short when we the truth the spirit of god is in us the spirit of god that's bringing life to dead bones the spirit of god that prophesies through us the spirit of god that will go through this world his breath to the ends of the earth and our people will be gathered back in and they will be alive and they will worship the one true and living God. And that is a hallelujah. As Pastor Amen. said, nothing will be able to stand in his way. But what a privilege and an honor for us today to recognize that spirit is in us. And we've been given assignment. We've been given duty. Let us rise up and let us go in that spirit prophesy touch these lives not by us touching them but by the spirit in us touching them may his spirit leap out of us Amen. bring us to life in a way that that's beyond ourselves and leap into the hearts of those around us who need this spirit amen amen, amen. let's amen. join together in in closing prayer i see our our uh Pastor Edward has joined us, and I seem to, to pick on you all the time for prayer, but uh, I don't think you'll mind. Would you like to close us off with prayer today? Where I'm meeting is Mike. There we go. There we go. How are you doing? Amen. All right, let us pray. Father God, Lord, it is by your spirit that we are led. We have been blessed so much to have the message from the word of God to come before thee, Father, honoring you, giving you praise and glory to your son, Yeshua. Lord, for without him, there is no us. There is no path for us to, to lead in light without the Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray and we're thankful, so thankful for the spirit. And Father, let it lead us, let us guide us, let it direct us in the right paths, in the right directions. Let us lead others to Christ, but not by our, but not by our, Amen. Might, by your might. Amen. In the name of Yeshua, we praise and give you honor and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory, Amen. Glory, Amen. Glory, glory. All God's Amen. people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has been a beautiful time to be in the word together, to be in the spirit together, to fill our hearts knit together, that we are part, we are one. And how Wonderful it is. We will close in just a moment with our ironic blessing, and then we will open mics, comments, uh, prayer requests, anything you'd like to share. Uh, each one of you, please know how much you mean to our hearts, and that Pastor Gil and I are available to you 24-7. If there is a need, we are here. Um, we're giving our pastor Edward a bit of a break. <laughs> we thank the Lord that he's come through his knee surgery. He is in a stage, but uh, what a blessing. There he is. <laughs> what a blessing to have him back with us. But, uh, just, just know that you are, you are knit together. In Amen. Beautiful family. Amen. And we Amen. thank God for each part, each one, an integral and important part. Thank you.